What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you do not know who I am, I am 12 inch and I make F2P content. If you guys are looking at the screen right now, you may notice that I have a Zenith the Power skin. You may notice that I'm 130 days into the game. This is the second Zenith the Power skin that I've won F2P, but is most certainly the earliest Zenith the Power that I won free to play. As far as I know, no one else um, has done this in the time that I have done this. I also hit second place and simultaneously got an MGE rank. So very, very nice stuff. I'm gonna go over what I did, uh, how I prepared for it and how it compared to the last one. So if you guys do not know what Zenith the Power is, essentially every single time there is a, well, generally there is a 7,000 gem event where you purchase a tree of killing barbs for 7,000 gems and you earn 35 sculptures for that. However, this time we had something called Esmeralda's Wheel, which replaced it, which was very, very sad. And hopefully does that, that does not precedent the future. I guess in the future, if we don't have 7,000 events and you guys don't know what I'm talking about, it's uh, it's, it's dark times, but you know, whatever. I get it's es Esmeralda's Wheel. Now, now you guys, oh man, that'll be dark. Okay, so what is Zenith? So that is Zenith. It gives you a special skin that you cannot earn else elsewhere as of right now. And they generally have about 10% of stats. Now this Xena skin was unique because it gave you 15% of stats and the one previous to it became, gave you 8% of stats to all units, right? So that had a lot of utility as well. I'm obviously an infantry player, so me getting cavalry stats really doesn't matter at all. However, what you have to realize is when you get a Xena skin and you're a free-to-play player, you're generally not going to be doing garrisoning or rallying later in the game, and this is almost uniquely a cosmetic flex item. Now there are very few things that I would do in this game for cosmetics, and this is not really great for your account. However, you have to get something. You have to have some kind of goals. So for some people, that goal is an early T5. For some people, that goal is a million deaths, a billion kills, maybe a Zenith of Power skin. For me, I love Zenith of Power. I love flexing on this game. It's one of the things that keeps me going. Just, just, just shit talking people about my skin is really high up there on the things that I enjoy. If you guys want to do that because you're psychopaths and you want to take all your, your, your hard earned gems and speeds and resources and blow them away on this, then you're more than welcome to do it. Although I wouldn't suggest it um, on my second Zenith of Power. It, it, again, it's just a cosmetic. This is an event that takes place in your entire continent. This guy was from 2504. I'm from 2500, 2504, 2499, 2497. Obviously the whole continent is taking place. Although you may get a very prestigious skin if you win, you're not gonna get a ton of sculptures, right? 15 for second place is about like a game of power. The gems are really nice, but the main thing that you're looking for here is just the skin. Now that I have blabbed on for long enough about what it is, let's go straight into my preparation. I don't think I've spent a significant amount of speed ups in probably around three months. Um, so I had about, let's say like 600 and change days worth of speed ups and I had an exact plan for how much power I was going to push. If you guys have never checked it out before, I believe this is actually Bulba's site. So this is rockcalculator.com. So you can have a speed up calculator, you can have training, building, research, yada, 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 right? You can put in your speed ups, you can put in how much you want of everything, and then it will tell you how much power and how many resources you will need. Before I entered Zenith, I knew exactly how many speed ups I needed to push. I believe I had an absolute maximum of about 17 or 19 million power that I could push. Thankfully, I didn't have to push it, but I knew exactly how much I could push and exactly how many speed ups I needed to do that based on these calculators. So I will put the link for this in the description below. If you guys are interested in finding that out, make sure that you plan everything out to a T. If you are attempting Zenith of Power, it's super important that you do that. Another thing that's really important is if you're free to play, generally your hospitals and your gold mines are going to be a huge point of power boosting right? So in this, I put three gold mines to 25 and I put four hospitals to 24. And that was a ton of power for a lot of resources, very few speed ups and obviously good power, right? So I did that on day three and I believe I got like four or five mil total power from my buildings and from some troop training. I didn't have T5 obviously, so I trained basically as much tier two as I could to reduce the strain on my universal speed ups. Another thing I did is I contacted the council about the buffs that we would put out. I said this in my last Zenith and I will say it again. If you do not have time with your buffs, you will essentially destroy your account attempting to go for Zenith and you may not succeed. I think one of my mistakes in hindsight is I probably should have done a lot of these smaller researches faster because even with the, I think around 45 minutes of, of time I had with 
scientist, which, you know, you guys probably won't get, you guys will probably get like 15 minutes at best. My helps were also slower, so that could be another point of contention. Your 15 minutes might be better than my 45. However, I had to do like 120 researches, maybe more. So if you consider about the sheer amount of helps that I had to get for this, it was absolutely ludicrous. I think I should have done a lot of the smaller researches before I did. I pushed about, I wanna say like 7 million power in, in research, maybe around 9 million power, something like that. Another thing is for preparation, I want to say I started to shore up the amount of resources I had and make sure I had everything I needed, probably about two weeks in advance. Another thing is depending on what kingdom you're in, depending how hard people have pushed, um, people will definitely support you. If you're pushing for like T5 or you're pushing for Zenith and Power or you're in like a, especially like some of the older kingdoms, people will just throw resources at you. They love to see somebody succeed, especially if you're F2P. Everybody loves to see an underdog come up and steal a title. So if you guys are going for something like that and you have the majority of the resources already, you can say, hey guys, I need X amount of resources. Do you think you guys can help me? And being an F2P player that you are, you probably have already shored up a good amount of goodwill in the KD, and you probably find yourself getting quite a lot. Just be careful to not over ask for resources. Make sure that you have most of what you need already, because when you're asking for resources, number one, they want to see a win. And number two, you're going to use up a lot of your goodwill. You can't do stuff like this all the time. So if you ask for resources, it'll probably be your one and only time that you're going to get anything big. Another thing is if you guys are already T5 or you guys will be pushing into T5 for a Zenith, I believe I did this on my main, but not on this account, because obviously I'm not T5. It's important that you have your buffs in a specific order. The way that I like the buffs is building, research, troops, troops, right? You're looking to train a bunch of tier four beforehand. Then you're looking to have building to get your Academy 25 in your hospitals and your mines, research to actually unlock your T5. And then on the troop training days, you unlock all your T4 and a T5 for mass amounts of power boosts. Now I didn't have T5 this time, so I basically did it all with research. Lucky for me, on this account, I had all my economic tech open, so it was pretty easy to do to push a bunch of power. On this account, unlike my other one, um, which I had failures on the Saladin MGE, and I had some, some previous events that did pretty bad, I very specifically had kind of like a clean slate coming into this. Um, I had a really good resources stockpiled, I had a ton of speed ups, I had specifically skipped the game of power event right before this, where I saw a lot of other people spending resources and speeds. And I had a really good idea of where all the rest of the whales in the kingdom and the continent were at in terms of looking at this. No one was super interested, which let me know that it was my time to strike. Being F2P is not just about hoarding and saving, but it's about spending speed ups when the opportunity presents itself as right. If it was the first day and I'd saw everybody was like 20 million power to enter this, I probably wouldn't have done it. However, Unlike on my main account, I was not against the now retired Death Squad and 1337, right? So there's 1341 and 1337 in my bracket of kingdoms in the continent, and they were incredibly hard to play against. Unbelievably hard, right? I was absolutely nerve wracked all the time, especially after spending a lot of speed ups. However, in here, I had much more information my second time around. I knew exactly what I was doing. And I knew how I was going to do it. So it was much less stressful. You know, obviously, if you don't make mistakes on your account, it'll be less stressful. But if you are coming into a Zenith with less speed ups or less resources than you should have, there will always be a next Zenith. So I would highly suggest waiting if you don't think you're completely ready. I almost called this one off because I didn't think I had everything I needed and I thought the scores were going to be much higher. Thankfully, the scores were lower, so I could have pushed immediately with just whatever I had on hand, but I didn't know that. So obviously, I started preparing, I started shoring up everything, I started contacting whales to see who was going for what, and uh, I did a lot of prep going in in terms of that. In terms of my execution for this, so my building order for this, because I wasn't T5, was training for day one of MGE, research for day two of MGE, in which I got some of my lower tier researches done. Not enough of them, obviously, because I ran out of time. Uh, on the fourth day. Then I did building on the third day in which I did my hospitals and my mines. And then on the fourth day, I did uh, all, all the researches I possibly could within the four hour kingdom buff allotted time limit. And then after that, I pushed a little more because obviously I wanted second place. Um, generally guys, top 10 is a win. Top seven is generally your goal because that way you're generally not gonna get over pushed. But yeah, you don't have to go for second place. Everybody gets a skin that's in the top 10 and that's really all that matters. On the first day, I wanna say I pushed around a million worth of power. I had uh, 20,000 tier four inf cooking. On the building day, I wanna say I pushed around four mil worth of power, bringing me up to around five mil for day three, which I pushed like maybe one mil worth of power. And then obviously day four, I pushed the rest of the 14.2 mil. In this, unlike my last account, I didn't have to gem the final batch. 
I didn't have to save expansions, none of that. It really wasn't too difficult to get into the top 10. I was basically a shoe in after the buff had finished. To get to second place, what I did was I had a 25 mine cooking, and then I had a 21 mine cooking, and then I had nine for Woot Steel uh, sitting in the academy. So two minutes before the day ended, I collected Woot Steel, I sped up my gold mine. I went from gold mine 21 to 22 to 23 to 24 to 25, right? I did all of that within two minutes with no helps, right? So I shot up probably like a mil, maybe a little more. And obviously, you know, pe people uh, people struggle to see that coming. They knew I was gonna push. They didn't know I was gonna push that hard. So that got me second place. You really don't have to do that, but the flex appeal of being second place is an F2P for the continent's second zenith was too much for me. That is how I got the skin. That's the preparation I went in. And now I will give my closing thoughts. Again, just like I said in the last one, this is kind of like a renewal of the last zenith. I don't think the average player should do this. I think it is super stressful. I think it takes a lot of out of your account. However, uh, you get a lot of power very quickly and that power can be valuable. So for example, with Cerulli Crisis, if you look at this, I had to do hard mode before. One, one trove, you know, less ore, less coins, right? Now I get to do nightmare mode, right? And it is as such with the other events as well. So the faster you push power, the faster you get your tech done, the faster you kill barbs, the faster you gather gems, the more rewards you get from events. So there are compounding factors in doing this. I still don't think the average player should do it. I think getting like 20 sculptures per event elsewhere is probably more valuable, but this is definitely more fruitful on a younger account than it would be on an older account. Kind of like on my main, I was on a timer for this. So I kind of have to go big or go home. You know, I have to push a lot of power pretty quickly. I plan to get T5 somewhere around a month and a half from here. So if I'm going to fit within that time frame and not just be pushing power outside of events, the only way I can really do that is by going on some big events, going really, really hard, and then going a little harder than I probably should on some smaller events as well. Unlike on my main, this is also not a crowning achievement. If I get this, it'll be dwarfed by the possibility of number one honor or by my quickly expertise YSG, or just the fact that I go for a T5 as fast as I could. I'm probably never going to use this skin. If I hit Sock and I pivot into a cab main with my new Navarre's control and my Nevsky, um, it might happen. Uh, I, I'm not gonna take it off the table, so this skin might actually see use, unlike the last one. But overall, I did not earn this skin with intent to use it. But if I were to go back, would I do this again? Yes. Yes, most definitely yes. It's not even close. This was such a good idea on this account compared to the last one. Um, I had so much more scouting, I had so much more information, and with the experience I had, I used it very cleanly. So if you guys are brand new in the game, you guys are thinking, should I be doing Zenith, right? First, you have to think of the amount of speeds you have. You have to think of what historically does my continent look like? Will these whales push for it? And if they do push for it, how much will they push? And can I compete with that? And then you have to think of buffs, you have to get time with the buffs, and yeah, there's, there's a whole lot in there, okay? If you cannot check off basically every single thing that I have said in this video, I highly, highly, highly suggest you don't go for Zenith and you just go for smaller events. Zenith is a very, very advanced event, and as seen here, right, a player with a lot of experience can demolish players without any, right? There are T5 players that were struggling to put 10 mil points on the board, where I skated into 14 mil and I could have done much more if I wanted to. So just be cognizant of what you're going up against if you're a first time player and you're looking at Zenith of Power. If you guys enjoy the content, likes, subs, donations if you can afford it. If you guys don't mind donating to the Streamlabs, link in the description below. Those are always appreciated. But if you guys enjoy the content, thank you so much. If you guys want notifications for when I go live, or if you want to contact me while I'm not live, the absolute best place you can find me is the Discord in the description below. I also post all my new videos when they go up there. YouTube or Twitch might not give you notifications, but I always will. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful day. Don't forget to check out the speed up calculator I put in the description below. And uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Deuces.